Hey there everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at the EPG, a modern take on the classic rocket launcher of old. Let's get started. If you've ever played Quake, Unreal, Toxic, or similar games in the past, you're going to feel right at home with the EPG. It's got low projectile speed, low fire rate, low ammo capacity, but fantastic splash damage and lethal direct hit damage from any range. The EPG deals 100 damage on a direct hit, with splash damage ranging from 75 all the way down to 5 or so at the lowest. When amped, your max splash damage reaches 90, which is still not quite good enough for that coveted one-shot kill. Your fire rate, by the way, just for completion's sake, is one round per second. As with all explosive weapons, distance traveled by the projectile does not affect your damage numbers at all. Distance from the explosion is your relevant range statistic, and the EPG has that in spades. If your target is on the ground, it's nearly impossible to not hit them for at least some damage. However, this is Titanfall that we're talking about. Pilots are fast, mobile, and oftentimes airborne. Hitting the ground or a wall and splashing an enemy pilot becomes less and less reliable as you face stronger and stronger opponents. If you don't get the one-shot kill, you're looking at a time to kill of well over one second, and if you don't get a two-shot kill on your opponents, just forget about it, man. At the range you're going to be using this puppy, you're very liable to get ripped up by alternators, hemlocks, and EVA-8 shotguns like you're made out of tissue paper. For these reasons, I would absolutely recommend against running an EPG while playing on a controller. With no aim assist, using a joystick to pilot a weapon straight out of Quake sounds like a total nightmare that I wouldn't wish on my worst enemy. While I do recognize the mobility may be a lot harder on controllers and players may be ground-based a lot more often, I feel like it's got to be pretty hard to aim that EPG, but you know what? Maybe GameSager is going to prove me wrong and I'm going to sound like a total jerk saying this, but uh, if it was me playing on a controller on a console right now, the EPG is a gun I would be running away from as fast as I possibly could. So maybe you guys can prove me wrong and be the exception to the rule, but I think for the average controller player, it's not a gun you should reach for, I don't feel. It's only really useful on PC where you have a native keyboard and mouse. The snap aim required when leading fast-moving targets is critical to this weapon's success. Luckily, the softball and the Cold War are completely different stories on controller, which fare much better for 99% of players, but more on this in another video. Other than that, there's honestly not much more to say about the EPG. It's a very straightforward weapon, so try to get those dank trick shots on your opponents before they gun you down with real guns. I've got to say, though, that the EPG is probably the most fun gun in the game for me, but it's not something I'd ever bring into a sweaty tryhard game whenever the occasion arises. Reach for this gun for fun, or even utility, but not for competition. One super cool usage of this weapon, which can't be replicated by any other gun in the game, is that you can rocket jump with it, just like in old school FPS. It works exactly like you'd expect. Jump and shoot it at your feet, and with correct timing, you'll boost yourself with pretty good velocity. You can do this going straight up to reach very high locations, or you can mix it in with your bunny hopping and your wall hops to maximize your speed and increase it beyond the barrier of what you may have previously thought possible. Just keep in mind that you're dealing up to 75 damage to yourself by doing this, or if you have an amped EPG, 90 damage to yourself, putting you in one-shot range of most guns, so try to only use it when you know for sure that you won't be shot for at least a few seconds. For a recommended loadout, there's pretty much only a single way I can stomach using this gun most of the time, but your mileage may vary. I personally use Phase Shift as my tactical, Gravity Star as my ordnance, Wingman Elite as my secondary, and my two kits, as always, I swear, consist of fast regen and low profile. With this weapon's long reload time and long delay between shots, making judicious use of Phase Shift is a must. Wingman Elite allows you to reliably finish off enemy pilots that are injured by your EPG while still keeping with the theme of just plain looking cool. Plus, it's not terrible at engaging long-range threats if they're staring down the sights of their DMR, for example, or, you know, you just plain need to spam somebody from long distance and that's the only thing that you can do at a given moment. The Wingman Elite does a fine job at accomplishing that goal for you. Being real, that's like the only reason that I use this loadout. It's just to look and feel like in another life, I could have been good at Quake. It's my cheater's way of feeling good about myself. A lot of PC players that I play with feel 
pretty much the same way about it, so if you've got a mouse and a copy of Titanfall 2, I strongly suggest giving this gun a try, just for the fun factor alone. Getting back on topic though, I do actually go for the Gravity Star with this weapon, as I stated before. Fire Star and Arc Grenades would probably go along just fine, because they do good, quick, reliable and consistent damage to targets and will usually put them within a one-shot range of your EPG as long as your splash damage is getting that nearly maximum damage. Honestly though, there's just something inherently awesome about catching two people in one gravity star and exploding both of them with your EPG that's just satisfying. Plus, you can keep with the feel-good, go-fast theme of this loadout by gravity boosting all over the place, cranking the fun of this loadout to 11. Before I round out this video, just as a quick note, because I'm sure I have confused a lot of people by talking about gravity boosting, here's just a quick rundown. The explosion of your gravity star has a very significant pushing force, and when timed correctly, you can send yourself flying at ludicrous speeds very easily. I took great advantage of this in a video I posted a couple of weeks ago, which I'll probably forget to link right about here, which you should check out to see what it could enable when you really master it. Anyways, that'll do it for the EPG guide. Short and sweet, this gun needs to be experienced more than it needs to be explained. Hopefully the gameplay has shown you what it's truly capable of and has inspired you to give it a try as well. Anyways everyone, thanks for watching. Check out the links to some of my mobility guide content if you're sitting there dumbfounded at how I'm moving the way that I am. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. Take care.